Hello there, ham and eggers. We're going to take you through a lesson in word processing, but this one's called table. All right, so I assume you already found this video because you're listening to me. All right, so uh, one quick thing here. When the video opens up in a new tab, sometimes you might want to take this tab, drag it out so you have the video in a separate screen. I could just drag it down and out, and now I have the video in a separate screen so I can line that up with the right-hand side of my workspace and then I could do my work over here when I need to. We're also going to take a look at the example so if you see right underneath the video that this is uh, was attached to you could also see that there's a screenshot right here I can click on this and it will show me an example of what we're about to do here showing me a PDF this is what it will look like when it's all finished so let's get started and how to make this. Back up here, I need to make sure that I uh, click on the assignment. <clears throat> I'm going to open it up right here. I see that there is an assignment down below, and I'm going to add my work. So down here in your work, you're going to click, and you're going to add it. It's going to be another word processing document. Click on Docs. And there it is now. It started this document for me, and it has my last, name, my first and last name on it. I'm just using someone else's account here for demonstration purposes. But now I can click on this uh, uh, item, and it opens up in a new tab. Once again, I could take this tab and I could drag it out, so that I have one tab for the information, one tab for the video, and one tab for the class, uh, or a different window for each. Okay. As you can see, my document is already labeled properly, name of the project, and then my name. That's all I need to do. Great job there. All right, now I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to go to, first thing, is insert. I'm going to create a table. Okay, so I'm going to insert a table, and it gives me options right here. Now, it tells me I can make my table all sorts of different sizes here. Uh, let me go back here, and you see I can make it any size I want, really. All right, but let's see what the example calls for. So let's go back to my screenshot. And I need something that is uh, one, two, three, four columns and one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So four columns, six rows. I come back to my document here. I'm going to go to insert table, four columns and six rows rows and I'll just stretch that down six rows four columns and I click and voila it opens up a table on my page that is the exact number that I asked for okay first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this top row I could do this by clicking and dragging so I just click inside the cell like this I click on the cell and then I just drag it open and it highlights the entire cell. Click and drag across all four cells right here like this. And then I'm going to use the right click or I can hold down the control button on the click keyboard and click. Okay, so control click or a right click, which is the opposite side of the mouse that I'm normally clicking on. And I want to merge cells so that it'll make all four of these cells one. I hit merge cells and whammo. There I have it so that the top row is now a border and the rest of the columns are down below. Now I can just click inside of this cell and begin typing and my title here as I could see back in my example Bethlehem Middle School Field Hockey Results so I just go ahead and type that right here Bethlehem Middle School so on and so forth go ahead and type that in and I'm going to continue typing all the stuff that I see right here I'm going to type team wins losses and I just put it in the right boxes. Oh, I just put it in the right boxes as I see here. So go ahead and fill in the rest of the information into your table and uh, hit pause on the video. Come back to it once you're done filling in the information. Okay, I have all my information right here typed into the cells of the table that I need them in. As you can see, well done, Mr. B. Thanks a lot, Mr. B. 
All right, so now I have all the information that I need. All I'm going to do now is start to format. So I'm going to click three times in the top bar right here in the top row. One, two, three, and it highlights the entire row. Would you look at that? Three clicks highlights the entire row, and now I'm ready to edit this font. So I want to use a font called Lobster Font. So I click Arial to change it to Lobster, but what is this? Aha! There's my Lobster. It should be in alphabetical order. And if I can't find it, some of you might not have Lobster. I can come down here and click More Fonts. I click on More Fonts. And then I can search for Lobster Font right here. And then I hit Return. OK. And then I can click on Lobster to make sure that it adds it to my font menu. And then I click OK. I come back here, and it has already changed my font to Lobster Font. Fantastic. Now I want to change the size. Come up here. Instead of 11, I want to go down here to 18. Whammo. You see how it increased the font size from 11 to 18. Now, let's center this text. Okay, so I'm going to come up here to Format. I want to center this because this is the title. I want to center this right in the middle here. And I'm going to go to Align and then Center. So I can center text within the cell of the table. So there you have it. Now I need to do a couple changes here. I'm going to change the letters to white. As you see from the example, I'm going to change the letters to white and the background to black. All right, let's give this a go. One, two, three. Have my cell highlighted here. I'm going to go to my font color right here. Go to text color. I click on white. Now it's still showing me this, but if I click off of this, uh-oh, it disappeared. It really didn't disappear. It's still there. The words are there. As you see, I triple click again, and now I have them highlighted again. Now I need to change the background to black. So with this cell selected, I'm going to come up here to More. Okay, I'm going to change the background to black. I click on More, and if I hold my mouse over top of anything, it tells me what it does. All right, so I could say, oh, I want my border color, which means the black line to be a different color. That's okay. I don't want that. I want my background color to be black. And now, what you, if you click off of it, you'll see. There it is. Black background, white letters. Let's move on. Okay, going back to my example, I see I have a different font here going across all of my headings or my field names. So I'm going to click and drag. Boom, boom, boom. It highlights the entire row by clicking and dragging across all four columns. That's a second row now. And now I can go and change up my font once again. Let's choose a different font. This time I want to choose Comic Sans. Comic Sans. So there I have it here. Team wins, losses, winning percentage, all in Comic Sans. Good job, Mr. B. Hey, I try. And let's move on now to centering some information. I have the wins, losses, and winning percentage all centered. Okay, you see how the numbers rest in the middle of each cell. So here's what I'm going to do. And if you mess this up already, go ahead and bring it back all the way. Sometimes people hit space to get out, bring it back, hit delete, get it all back to normal again because we're going to center the entire thing. So we're going to click and drag down and over. Click and drag down and over and I can center just these columns right here. So I come up here, I have my center button, still select from the more, from the more option as you see. Or I could go to format and Align. Let me get this up here so that you can see. Format, align, and center it like that. Okay, so it centered it in the cells. Now, one last thing, pay attention here. I got my table, uh, my team 
field centered as well. So let's go back. Let's click on the team. I'm going to highlight one, two, three, that entire cell. And I still have my more. I click on center. Boom. There it is. Let's check it one last time for accuracy. Everything else seems exactly the same. Wonderful job. Once you're sure, everything is set, everything is in the proper order, all your field name, all your name, all the title, you know what, everything looks good, it's time to turn it in. It's automatically saving, see it says all change, it automatically saves every couple seconds. So it's ready to be go it's ready to go, it's ready to turn in. I click on turn in. It takes me back to my classroom. Are you sure you're ready to turn it in? Did it. Down here it tells me my assignment was turned in, then it disappears. Excellent work. I could also check down here it says my work has been turned in.